drummingforlife.com. Hey there, aloha. It's Vaughn here at drummingforlife.com. How you doing? Hope you're doing good. Uh, today I'm going to share with you about the what I believe to be the most important brush sound. Now, if you're playing brushes in jazz or any other style, this is the sound you want to get from your brushes. And let's just go right into it. This is the sound right here. This smooth, wonderful, textural sound. Okay? Now, it doesn't matter what style you're playing. You can play bossa nova. Right? You can play swing. You can, be, you can play anything, okay? Okay? Any style. You want to have that beautiful swish sound. That's what separates brushes from sticks. Uh, I see sometimes, I see drummers playing on gigs and they'll be using brushes in really kind of a more of a stick way. So they'll be playing, you know, which is cool because you have a different sound, right, when you're, when you're playing kind of the grooves that you usually play. But it doesn't really allow the brushes to breathe. It doesn't allow them to express. And I'm just a real fan of getting this nice, smooth, wonderful sound out of the brushes. Now, before I go into uh, more detail, I would want to mention that uh, as a part of my, uh, I have my brushes mastery course, I really cover this sound and, and also many other sounds in great detail. Um, and it's now at my jazzdrumschool.com. So I hope you'll go check that out as well. The link is below. Uh, and it's really a wonderful course. I have people enrolled in it from uh, all over the world, which is really exciting. And it's, it's helping them a lot with their brushes. The feedback I get from them consistently is, wow, this is really helpful. And this is helping me to connect the dots and know how to use my brushes in real musical contexts, which is the reason why I teach. If you know me by now, I'm all about helping you connect your drumming to the music. And I always say there's 50% uh, patterns, and that's, that's important. The jazz drumming is 50% patterns. The other 50% is connecting those patterns to music. And I really want to help you do both. So. This is the sound you want right here, okay? You can kind of see. Um, we'll go to the next, next part. Also, I want to mention, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you like what you see here, please like the mash or smash or cross stick or swish that uh, like button and leave a comment if you like it. I always reply to my comments. So this is the kind of sound that we want, right? We want this kind of sound. Now, there's a couple of things I want you to think about when you are working on getting a good sound with your brushes. One of the things that I see drummers do, and especially my students when they first start off learning how to play brushes, is they tend to kind of have their brushes at a, kind of an angle like this. You see how my brushes are like really kind of high up. It's kind of really... Um, kind of almost, it's closer to straight up and down than it is to, to flat. And what happens with this is you get this kind of, it gets kind of stuck on the, the texture of the drum head. Whatever drum head you're using, if you're using a regular coated drum head or you're using this kind of special coating, this kind of fiber skin kind of drum head, you get this kind of sound, right? And that happens when you're, the angle of your brush is, is too high. So what you want to do to avoid that is try to bring your hand down as close to parallel to the, the, to the uh, drum head as you can. That way you get a nice, smooth, and consistent sound. 
no matter what kind of stroke you're doing, you could be doing a circular stroke, you could be doing a side to side, you could be going out, you could be going in, it doesn't really matter. You could be doing these kind of strokes, anything. You really want to always think about how you can keep the angle of your brush, right? If I'm like this or like this, you want to keep the angle of your brush as flat as you can. Now, obviously, you're not going to make it flat, flat because you can't move it. But a little bit of an angle. I would say this is probably, what, a 15 degree angle, 20 degree angle? I don't know. I'm not a mathematician, but this is probably what I would, I would suggest. It's about right here, okay? Let me put it on this camera, too, so you can see. I'm going to put it on the practice pad. You can kind of see what I'm doing here, all right? I'm moving it like this. All right. I'm just doing a circular motion right now. The same is true for both hands, okay? So you want to have you want to have both hands doing kind of the same thing. You don't want to have your hand up here or like this. All right. Keep it down low. Keep it nice and smooth. All right. And one other thing I want to mention, and I guess we can stay here for the practice pad angle. One thing I want to mention is you also want to try to use as much finger motion as you can. So try not to be moving your whole arm when you're making your brush strokes, okay? Try not to be like this kind of motion. I'll put it on the overhead and you can kind of see what I mean. I see drummers do this a lot when they're playing brushes. They're moving their whole arm, okay? See the front angle. See, I'm moving my arm a lot, right? You see that? What I want to encourage you to do is really come out from the fingers. Use your wrist and your fingers as much as you can. See that? Kind of almost like that kind of throw catch uh, technique, you know, we use a lot in jazz, right? See that? All right, and, and the same is true for your right hand, but I found with the right hand, uh, you know, in general, I'm going to end up using more arm motion because of the, the, the grip. And this is kind of why I really encourage students to use traditional grip. And I talk about this a lot in the course as well. There's a real distinct advantage, I believe, physically to playing brushes with traditional grip. And that is, you get an asymmetry in your sound, and in the feel, and in and visually. And you, this is a lot easier because your left hand is going to be is going to be dominated, especially my technique. Your left hand will be dominating kind of all, a lot of the swishing motion. To put it in your your hand like this is makes it just so much extra energy and effort to make that happen. I really believe to get really consistent, nice swish sound, especially circular motions, go with traditional grip. It's gonna serve you much better, okay? All right, this kind of motion. And with this hand, I sometimes do these kind of motions, but not as often, okay? But you can see I'm moving my arm a little more. Not a lot, but just a little bit more, all right? Try also with your right hand Try to make sure that you're not bending it like this, cocking it down like this. You're going to get some repetitive stress injury. You're going to get some maybe tendonitis or carpal tunnel syndrome if you continually play brushes like this. All right. So bring that, make that, make that hand flat. If you need to check in, just put your brush on your, your wrist and you can see is it is it laying flat or is it kind of like this, right? If you feel tension, drop your hand at your side. All right, and count to five, and then you can bring it back up and, and play again. So that's basically, those are a couple things I want you to think about when you're, when you're trying to get a smooth sound out of your brushes, and you'll be able to get a smooth sound every time. So I encourage you to check that out, you know, and see what you can do with it, okay? Even with the right hand and tapping, I'm keeping it pretty much close to the drum. I'm not bringing my hand up like this, okay? All right, everything is real nice and tight. 
Think about when you go to Vegas and they deal the cards out, digga 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 like that, you know? I don't know if you've ever been to Vegas, but it's so interesting. You go to the card tables, they just, they're so fast, and they're ch -ch -ch -ch, or, they, or they deal them like this, and it's just this kind of effortless motion. That's the same kind of motion we want to have with our brushes, okay? All right, so I hope that helped. Uh, a couple more things here I just want to mention. I've got lots of stuff to support your drumming if you haven't checked it out already. I've got a blog, a uh, really great blog. I've been adding more to that now, uh, all about drumming. I've got private lessons. If you're interested in private lessons, uh, hit me up at my vonbarenstore.com. You can sign up over there. I've got different kind of packages, lesson packages. Uh, I've got lots of great drumless tracks, tracks that are really focused on helping you connect your sound to the music and helping you prepare for playing live gigs and real live situations. So I want you to check those out as well. I've got my Brushes Mastery course, as I've talked about before, and I have my uh, jazzdrumschool.com. Uh, and right now I've just got the Brushes Mastery course, but soon I'm going to have a lot of other uh, courses on there, uh, including stuff with sticks, hands, mallets, all kinds of fun things. So hope you'll check it out. Thanks again so much for watching. And as I always say, keep on drumming. Take care. Drumming for life.